I did much of my growing up on my uncle's dairy farm in Wisconsin. And it's very clear that the purpose of cow's milk is to turn a 65 pound calf into a 700 pound cow as rapidly as possible. And cow's milk is baby calf growth fluid. That's what the stuff is. Everything in that white liquid, the hormones, the lipids, the sodium, the protein, the growth factors, IGF-1, everything is in there to blow that calf up into a great big cow or it wouldn't be there. And whether you pour it on your cereal as a liquid, whether you turn it into butter, whether you coagulate it into yogurt, whether you ferment it into cheese, whether you freeze it into ice cream, it's baby calf growth fluid. If you're trying to lose weight, that seems to be counterproductive to say the least. But there are some scary things in cow's milk. The dairy industry didn't let us know that they've changed their practices. On my uncle's farm, when a cow would come into her pregnant uh, cycle, uh, her fertility cycle, we would lock her up in a stanchion, the man from Badger Breeders would come and, and ram that tube of bull semen up to her uterus and make her pregnant. And shortly after there, she would stop lactating. She'd stop giving milk. Uh, pregnant mammals uh, stop lactating for good reason. Uh, and and uh, she'd be off the production line for months at a time so she had her next baby and then would uh, start giving milk again. Well, that worked for my uncle's dairy farm with 40 cows back in the 1950s. In today's modern dairy operations with 2,000, 3,000 cows, the, the dairy producer cannot afford to have their best milkers taken offline for months at a time. So they have genetically modified the cows, so now they will give milk even though they're pregnant with their next calf. They give milk all the way through their pregnancy. So every dish of ice cream, every container of Greek yogurt, every slice of mozzarella cheese on your pizza these days is, with rare exceptions, made from the milk of large pregnant bovines. The estrogen content of this milk is through the roof. This All pregnant female mammals have estrogen coursing through all their tissues. And this milk is loaded with estrogens. And, and when people consume it, it shows up in their, in their urine within 15 minutes. Their urine is pouring with estrone, estradiol, estriol, pregnant diol, progesterone. These are potent mammalian estrogens. These are not the puny little phytoestrogens in soy. These are official mammalian estrogens. And doctors are getting concerned about this. Why are our little girls going through puberty at age eight and nine and 10? Because they have something to do with that river of milk and cheese and ice cream and yogurt they are pouring down their gullet every day, filled with powerful cow estrogens. Get your mammograms, ladies. Why do American women get breast lumps? It's not normal, it's not natural. Go to rural China, you don't see women with breast lumps yet. When the American diet metastasizes over there, you will. <laughs> um, uh, maybe it has something to do with all the milk and cheese and ice cream yogurt they're eating for, to prevent osteoporosis, which it doesn't do. <clears throat> now, we get most, more osteoporosis than anyone else on the planet, though we consume more calcium and dairy products than anyone. Guys look down and say, hey, where I get these man boots, you know? Who's sitting there eating his cheese nachos and his deep dish pizza. Fella, you're eating cow estrogens. What do you think is gonna happen? And every hundredth case of breast cancer is in a man. Uh, could have that have something to do with all this cheese that they're eating. You know, estrogens make the prostate gland unstable. The guys get more prostate cancer when they eat dairy products. And when a woman gets a breast cancer and she's eating baby calf growth fluid laced with, with these growth hormones, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. Their, their cancers go faster, they die, or, they die faster, nastier deaths. So when you ask what's wrong with dairy products, good heavens. Um, I tell my patients, look in the mirror. If you've got big ears and a tail, if you're a baby calf, cool, you know, and enjoy your dairy products. But if you're not a baby calf, there's so much else to pour on your cereal these days. They all need lovely almond milks and rice milks and hemp milks. Use some, some of these non-dairy substitutes, and uh, I think you're going to be far healthier as a result. Fish has a reputation, oh, it's health food, it's got omega-3 fats in it, some brain food, good for you. But two major problems with that. We've been treating our oceans like a sewer, and now all these fish uh, in the ocean, and especially the big predator fish that feel on, feed on the smaller fish, 
I have accumulated so much mercury and so many pesticides that you have to view virtually all fish flesh as toxic these days uh, from the medical point of view. Um, and we are hauling two trillion animals out of the ocean every single year. Uh, I urge all the viewers uh, to get and read uh, the wonderful book by Dr. Richard Oppenlander called Comfortably Unaware. And he lays out what our flesh-based and fish-based diets are doing to this planet. And, uh, and the story of the oceans is so tragic. And it, there is no sustainable fishery any longer. We're strip mining the oceans. We're clear cutting the oceans. We're, uh, we're, leaving, we're gonna leave an ocean full of jellyfish to our kids. Um, so uh, f from the toxic point of view, from the ecologic point of view, it, it's time to stop eating the fish. There are plenty, you get plenty of protein out of beans and peas and chickpeas and hummus sandwiches and you know, lentil stews. There's pl plenty of protein around. But how about those omega-3s that you know, we get from the fish, from the fish oil? Well, surprise, surprise. Fish do not make omega-3 fatty acids. They don't make DHA, they don't make EPA. Well, where does it come from? Those essential omega-3 fatty acids are made by plants. They're made by algae cells that float in the ocean. And fish swim in the ocean with their mouths open all day, swallowing the algae. And it's the algae DHA that winds up in the fish's muscle that when you kill the fish and crush the flesh and get ooh, fish oil, it's algal, algae-derived DHA that you're really eating. Well, guess what? Uh, some smart entrepreneurs realized that we we're running out of fish and the DHA, essential fatty acids, come from algae in the first place. So they are growing these lovely omega-3 producing fatty, fatty, uh, fatty acid producing algae in big tanks of pure seawater or clean seawater. And they're harvesting um, the algae and extracting the DHA directly from the algae. And I think that's wonderful. Uh, it's time to leave the fish off the hook. And and so if you want extra DHA or EPA, then absolutely reasonable, go to your uh, health food store or online and look for algae-derived DHA or EPA and uh, take one or two veggie caps of that every day and you'll get all the benefits of that without having to uh, kill any of these magnificent fish and, and, and increasingly fewer of them left. So for all the way around, again, time to leave the fish off the hook, uh, eat plants and take a little extra algae-derived DHA if you'd like.